All right, you ready? Yeah, I guess. All right, let's start it off. Uh, we've never given a talk to a crowd this big before, so we're both kind of really nervous. So. And. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, we've had to uh, basically stay quiet for four years while going through our court case and legal issues, so this is the first time we can talk about as much as we want. <laughs> so here's hoping we don't get arrested when we get back to the state. <laughs> um, so basically, uh, the story starts with Operation Payback um, and the anonymous movement that sort of came with it. Um, there, at the time Operation Payback happened, it was focused more on piracy, MPAA, RIAA, things like that, um, and the copyright. Um, at the same time that Operation Payback was happening, uh, WikiLeaks was uh, also forming itself into a major journalistic entity. Um, it, what was it, like two or three weeks into Operation Payback? Uh, a little bit more than that. Well, it started with the government decided to hire an Indian company to DDoS Operation, or to DDoS the Pirate Bay, and so there were a series of, like, revenge DDoSes to get back at them. And then that was sort of the forming of Operation Payback. And then things just sort of gone to a lull when the big LimeWire lawsuit came out yeah. at uh, September. Yeah. And so I kind of came in like early November is when I showed up. Yeah. And the Avenge Assange stuff started to come on December 6th. Yeah. So it was sort of like a series of just little stuff. And then this happened, so. Oh, and a quick disclaimer. Important disclaimer. <laughs> Achtung! <laughs> um, so, as most of you know, Anonymous is everything and nothing encompassed in one. It, it shouldn't be identifiable, it should be movement and fluid and everything. So, when we talk about Anonymous or when we relate to Anonymous, we don't stand to define it. We stand to show you what happened in relation to it or our case in relation to it. So there's, um, I was in the reporter channel on Anonymous a few weeks ago and this reporter asked, well, Anonymous doesn't really seem to have like a goal. And he was missing the point totally because Anonymous is a method of activism. And so the people that take part in it have lots and lots of different goals and needs. And so to define Anonymous as this thing that has one goal and one need would be to destroy it because it's meant to help the people that have different needs and different goals and so it doesn't have just one. Um, so that's why there isn't one. All right. That's Forget my the... mugshot. <laughs> These are our mugshots uh, from the FBI. Uh, the marshals. Mine's from the marshals. Oh, mine's from the FBI. Yeah, because it's got the tiles, so that's the marshals. We had two mugshots. But only one was leaked to the public, I guess. Um, here you can see our indictment, or at least the front page of it. Yeah. Oh, and we want to point out that Dennis Collins, the guy at the very top, he really, really wanted to be here today, but the government decided to re-indict him again for another charge in Virginia for essentially the same thing. Um, so there's some question of like double jeopardy and they got around it by just extending the dates out. Um, so he couldn't be here because he could, he's not allowed to have a passport because they decided to indict him again. Yeah, and then others on the list, uh, although they were involved, they liked their anonymous status and they just don't want to be public figures um, involved in it. Not that they don't stand with their beliefs or what they did, uh, they just I uh, don't want to be in the public eye. And then some of our co-defendants are here right now. So you can stand up if you'd like.
And those are some of my best friends in the world, and I'm really glad you guys aren't going to jail. <laughs> So uh, this is sort of an explanation around our talk, or around our court case. So uh, December 4th. You can read it right there. Yeah. Oh, I can. Cool. <laughs> I like it better up here. But So on or around December 4th um, is when the blockade against WikiLeaks started to kick in. So we know that about a week before this, the government had, the government and various governments, our government, um, the French government, Britain, started to send out requests to various service providers that they start denying service uh, to Wow Holland and WikiLeaks. Now, Wow Holland, as a lot of you know, represents a lot of different projects. So WikiLeaks, while we support them, there were a lot of other projects that just kind of got shut down because they were in the way, um, coming through blocking Wow Holland. And, so in retaliation, uh, a lot of members of the anonymous movement decided that it was time to do something about this, and there were a series of retaliations against uh, PayPal, primarily, I think, because they were like the biggest problem. And then there was MasterCard, Visa, Bank of America, Western Union, pretty much any way other than just putting cash in an envelope and mailing it. You could not donate to Wow Holland or WikiLeaks. And so there were a series of denial of services and black faxes. So I don't know the word in German for black fax, but it's when you take a black piece of paper and you tape it in the fax machine and send it on the loop. So, <laughs> and, and, yeah, it was pretty great because, um, like, there was some guy who, leaked one of the service admins emails from the PayPal that was like, yeah, so one of the fax machines just caught on fire because the heat sensor wasn't working. <laughs> Go us. Fire's good. Uh, so I think, next slide. So out of these attacks, uh, I'm not sure if you can read, but we'll go through it. This is the damages total in dollar amounts that PayPal put towards the government. Uh, so um, you can see that from, our, from the DDoS attack, they said they spent almost a half a million dollars in work effort, $4.5 million in new hardware and software. Basically, they re got a brand new infrastructure on our dime. And a new fax machine. <laughs> It's a very expensive fax machine. Um, part of this 4,500 lots of dollars um, was a software update. So they tried to claim to the government that, they, that we were responsible for the fact that they needed a software update. So what was their plan if we hadn't DDoS them was to just not update? <laughs> um, so the judge said, well, because you paid for it and received it, that is like you, that's a purchase, that's not a loss. So um, like if we break your window, we are responsible for replacing the window, but we're not responsible for like digging you a moat also, like that's not our problem. Um, so that was pretty cool. We didn't have to pay them $4 million. So that was pretty awesome. I don't have $4 million. I don't know anyone that does. Nope. All right, so on January 27th, the following month. Uh, oh, that's got a typo, but yeah, go on. That's okay. We have typos, we're human. So, <laughs> um, January 27th, about a month, the next month, we, uh, 40 people, or 35 people in the United States, five uh, around Europe, were um, raided. Um, I believe the Europeans were arrested at the time um, for the uh, DDoS attacks against PayPal. Um, my personal experience was uh, waking up at 6 o'clock in the morning after I had logged off my computer at 3 a.m. Um, I woke up to banging on the door. I walked into my small apartment living room area to 
lights and people screaming outside my door. With guns. With guns. Um, I hadn't seen the guns yet because my blinds were closed, but... So uh, they were screaming, open up the door. I tried to go wake my girlfriend up to let her know what was going on. Um, and then uh, I went back and opened the door and immediately had a gun shoved in my face. Ten people, like, bum rushed the door to try to get in. Um, I immediately turned around, fell down to the ground, was trying not to fight, not to put up any sort of struggle because I, who am I? <laughs> I'm not the Terminator or anything. So, so the slide says 40 indictments. This actually is supposed to say 40 search warrants. So there were 35 or 40 served in the United States and then five actual arrests in the UK. And uh, some of those people actually were here at the conference today, right? Some of them? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Um, that was them. <laughs> and so, like, mine is starting, if you want to know what a Fed knock sounds like, that's what it sounds like at 6 in the morning, and it's a really scary sound when you're just waking up. Um, so mine is, I was living with my dad at the time, and I got pulled out into the cold with like the flashlight in your face and guns. And there's all these stupid questions they ask to verify that it is indeed you. And then during the search warrants, um, they ask you all these questions. And one of the questions which, um, so Anonymous by this point in Anon history had kind of, we were still doing flyers and things on 4chan, but we weren't organizing there, we were organizing on IRC. So, they, one of the questions they asked was, tell us about 4chan, which is a really vague and strange question to ask. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so after like, I mean they asked and I was like, look, you don't want to know about 4chan. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to know about 4chan. And so, so, uh, I was like, well, if you really want to know, I'll tell you, but you can't unhear it. Like, this is permanent. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing this to yourself forever. And uh, they were like, yeah, tell us about 4chan. And so I told them, I have a pretty good memory for things that I've read, so I told them almost like, line by line, one of the worst 4chan threads I'd ever read. <laughs> And I'm, I'm not going to subject you guys to it now, but uh, <laughs> it's essentially about this guy that's like in love with his dog and in a number of ways, may, maybe some of you have seen it. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Anyway, but the, the FBI agent, one of them had to go up outside and throw up afterwards. <laughs> little things in life, like getting an FBI agent to throw up outside your house. Um, they didn't put that in an evidence bag. I'm really disappointed. So after the January 27th uh, time when uh, the search warrants were put out, when they were going after all their evidence and whatnot, it took them six months uh, to go through all that, uh, go through testimonies by people who decided to work with the government. Um, and on July 19th, they finally arrested uh, 14 of us. So, so that means that for six months, there were 40 people in America sitting there like, oh, fuck, I'm going to get, a, I'm gonna get indicted, I'm going to go to jail. And then, like, so we've been indicted and our stuff is over. And then the same for more or less the 13 people in Virginia. Well, they're still waiting for their sentencing, um, some of them. So, but those other 40 people that have been served search warrants, who some of them had just liked things on Facebook or had um, signed a petition, like things that are suspicious, um, they're still sitting there like, am I gonna go to jail? Like they have not, they've maybe gotten their stuff back, maybe not, like they are just sitting there in limbo going, I've been searched, what happens now? So it's a really scary place to be. Yep, yep. Um, all right, yeah, so we were arrested and all that other stuff, and these are the charges we were given. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, do you want to explain it? Or? No, you can uh, go ahead and explain that. I'll explain you. All right, so 
Uh, there's two counts in the United States if you are guilty of guilty of telling someone how to do something and they use that information to commit a crime and you could have possibly known that they would do this, then you are a conspiracist and you are guilty of almost exactly the same charges. And so we have a statute of limitations. I think you have something like that here where for a federal crime of this nature, it's usually seven years after the crime is committed. If they haven't charged you in those seven years, it's over, it doesn't matter, they can't. But if it's a conspiracy charge, the statute is seven years after the dissolution of the conspiracy. So that would be anonymous. So we could possibly be charged for other things for up to seven years after the dissolution of anonymous, which hopefully will be maybe never. Thank for the rest of our lives. Um, and it kind of came down to it could be two 15-year sentences served like at the same time and then uh, $250,000 in fines. That's just fines. That's not even restitution right. to so our the victims. The $5.4 million or whatever figure they decided to come up with, that's not added on to this fine total. Yeah, so we'll get done with the boring legal stuff in a minute. So... You. Um, a little bit about the CFAA, um, and this is the general umbrella law they use for everybody they consider a hacker. Basically, if you know how to get on Facebook, they consider you a hacker. I don't get it, <laughs> but hey, I'm not the FBI, so. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, so the law was originally intended for banking fraud. Right, so you hit a certain combination of buttons on the ATM and got money out, or you broke into the bank's phone line and stole some information. It was originally intended for that, and they have stretched the law so far that it even covers violating the terms of service of Facebook. Okay, so we've gone from banking fraud to everything. Um, and so there's, it was originally intended the way it was written to actually limit what the federal government could prosecute. It wasn't intended to cover like petty squabbles, like if I put something on your laptop, covered under the CFA now, but that's not what was originally intended. So, um, included all these things, added malicious code, DDoS. Um, you got this one. Oh, so this is an interesting point uh, Mercedes has been talking about a lot recently, is that uh, under the CFAA, when you saw our charges, one was for attempt to damage a secured computer um, or protected computers. And so the thing about the computer or the way that the federal government in the United States works is that if you take something or you do something illegal over a state line, any of the 50 states, if you go over the state line with that, that jumps into federal jurisdiction and they take control of it. What they've been able to do is that they're saying that the devices that we use to connect to the internet, to go globally all over the world, are interstate devices. That means if you do anything on them illegal, it automatically falls under federal jurisdiction, no which, matter where you are. Which makes it a felony instead of a misdemeanor. It's automatically 15 years, as opposed to, so if, even if it never touches the internet, if it's over a router, um, if I send something to him over the same router, if we're in the same state, which is really abnormal or used to be abnormal for American law, then it's automatically a felony because it's interstate on an interstate device. All right, so now into more like the political uh, the fun things. side. Yeah, the fun stuff. We promise. Um, so we have... Uh, you, you notice it in America a lot. Um, you may notice it in your own separate countries where governments and uh, corporations work hand in hand to make sure they're protected. Uh, the common people, the people who try to stand up for what they believe is right or what services they believe they were uh, or, uh, promised they're not given, uh, they seem to fall back to nobody. Um, Especially in America, I know our corporations are almost given the same rights as individuals. More than. 
More rights than individuals. So, so you're looking at um, this tradition that has been going on for ever. <laughs> and no one, it, it just seems to get put to the wayside because the governments and the corporations have all the money. Um, so what it is is the system of, so for instance, PayPal, for our case, if they wanted to be paid for the damages, they could have just sued us, right? It didn't have to be a possible criminal case. But instead, they went to the government and said, government, will you get restitution out of these people? So it didn't have to be a federal case. It didn't have to be jail time. It could have just been, um, like, I don't know what it is for. T tort is like if someone's hurt, but a corporation isn't a person. So. Yeah. Um, sure. Yeah. But, and so then you see the United States using PayPal to silence its opponents like WikiLeaks and the other well hung causes that got in the way. So you see this back and forth where the government's helping the banks and the banks are helping the government. So at this point, is there really any difference um, between the two? Ah, uh, this guy. Here's good old General Alexander, head or, yeah, was the head of the NSA? Oh, yeah. well, he was do you ever really stop? NSA. Well, yeah. Well, he's got his own private security thing now, supposedly not built on NSA technology. But who knows? Um, so this is when... Um, he went before Congress and said that we could possibly cause power outages. Oh, it's kind of ridiculous, because why would we knock out our own power grid that we used to get on the Internet, download porn? <laughs> We're pretty selfish like that. But during, but during the time that the attacks and things like that were going on, many, you would see many officials in Congress uh, lobbying with uh, the argument that Anonymous was this big, scary thing that was going to hurt everybody. So they would use that to get more money, more power, uh, all those sort of things. Okay, so another major issue just surrounding the whole transparency movement and WikiLeaks, and you should all be familiar with this, is that uh, the government's lack of transparency like really impacts your ability to decide who your government officials should be, because uh, you can't impeach what you don't know, and then like if you don't know what they're doing, then how do you know if they're doing a good job? So. And everything is classified. They, they just something came out that was declassified that was classified in the 60s, and it was something. They're not supposed. There's specific law that they're not supposed to classify anything just because it's embarrassment, embarrassing for a public official. And this document came out that was the guy like had sex with prostitutes or something, and it was classified for 50 years. So, and then also, um, so in the United States, if you destroy something that's part of the process of a federal investigation, then you're tampering, within, you're tampering with evidence or impeding the investigation, despite your Fifth Amendment right to not incriminate. But if they destroy it, it's national security, and it's very important, and we can't question that. So. Right, right. And this, is, and this transparency is the biggest part of what Snowden and Manning did, I think, is to tell us what is actually going on so we know who to put in charge. I mean, if we need leaders, we need to be able to trust those people. Why are we not actually finding out what they're doing? And Jeremy Hammond. And Jeremy Hammond. Okay. Oh. Um, so shortly after our search warrants, so they've done the 40 search warrants going, we've caught the cyber terrorists, and they're really bad in the power grid. Um, the head of the FBI went in front of Congress and said, there's cyber terrorists and we need more money and we need more tools and we need more power. And they were even talking about reallocating money from keeping Mexicans out of the United States to looking for us, which if they're willing to give up their hatred of Mexicans in the United States, that is a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big deal. Um, so yeah, some really nice quotes is, well, we always need more money, and uh, we're a big FBI family, 
And this is the guy that gave it. We made a nice little gif of him going every time More he me- money. every time he mentions the budget, his hands go further and further <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah. We made our Norwegian friend watch it. He'd never seen a government video before. Uh, oh, uh, you want to go? Um, Sabu and the uh, time when Lolsec uh, was around. Um, basically, we see Sabu as an agent provocateur. He was placed there by the government um, and was meant to control the anonymous narrative through um, bullying and threatening harassment. Generally being a douchebag. Generally being a douchebag. So, so there's, uh, he's that guy that shows up to the peaceful protest and throws a brick through a window and tries to start a riot in what would have otherwise been a totally okay, totally like peaceful, non-harmful just demonstration. Um, and so we feel that it happened at a very particular time when a lot of people were being arrested and going underground, but Anonymous was still becoming really famous and a lot of new people coming in. So um, Subu, we don't know if it was on purpose. I think it was on purpose. He maybe kind of disagrees. But we think that Subu was placed at a very particular time in the movement's growth that kind of gave him the opportunity to be that guy with the rock in the window. Um, and he's completely opposite from what he talks now. What He talks now like the anonymous was way too publicized for him, and he did all of this. And says had, the guy that had like 2 million Twitter followers Yeah, he was the guy who was anonymous Sabu on Twitter. Like, how much more public do you want to be? And then the way he would funnel people into Law Sex Channel for everything, make sure that everything wow. was logged there. Like, it was just the whole thing was set up completely dirty. Well, he had a conversation with... Um, Gabrielle Coleman, who's an anthropologist who kind of studies these things, they were talking on Jabber and he refused to use OTR, like refused, like flat out, refused to use off the record plugin. So uh, I think next slide is probably better. And like the, the, the big thing on Sabu is that we're not able to talk to him. We're not able to talk to anybody affiliated, known affiliated with Anonymous. We can't be in back channels discussing things that are happening. We're just kind of watching things unfold. So everything that's unfolding regarding Anonymous is now coming onto us. Yeah. So we're getting blamed for things that we can't even stand in the way of um, is essentially what had happened. So we're watching all this stuff happen, and then we're currently indicted, and people are saying, well, you guys are stealing credit card numbers. It's like, no, I just maybe sent some packets to PayPal. I didn't steal anyone's anything. Um, so for this, it's the first month of our indictment. We were completely prohibited from touching any sort of computer. Um, it, we were, for almost a year, specifically barred from using Twitter for almost no reason that they could justify other than, well, maybe they'll talk to people. Um, that would be terrible. From, from what I heard, though, it, it had to do with uh, some protests, which I can't remember off the top of my head, but they were using Twitter to uh, circumvent the police blocks. So oh, right. some command center of this protest would say, hey, the cops are here, don't go this way, and they'd make sure the movement yeah. would move somewhere else. How um, dare we avoid cops? Right. Uh, and then for the entire length of the indictment, we were prohibited from speaking to I- or speaking on IRC, but other protocols like Jabber and things like that were totally fine. So it makes no sense. It's the government. Oh, you. Uh, this basically goes off of the movie that we just watched. I mean, yeah. the amount of things and ways they have to track us is mind-boggling at times, and most people don't even want to try to wrap their head around it. Like, but, if, you, if you want a fun game, just try to keep track of how many times you hit that button on the side of your phone to turn the screen on to see what time it is. Like, just where would you be without your phone? I don't own an alarm clock. I only own a cell phone. Um, every day. We're completely dependent on these devices. We send so much communication over them, we don't even realize how much. And then they can monitor all of it. 
because the way it works, um, I know in Germany it's very different. You guys actually cannot surrender the right to your own di your own communications. But in the United States, it's not this way in the United States. So every message I send on Facebook is not actually my message. It's Facebook's data on me. So if the government comes to Facebook and says, Facebook, we really need all this data, Facebook can legally say yes because it's not my data that they're surrendering, it's their data on me. So um, there is a big conflict because um, we have a constitutional right to privacy in the United States, supposedly. And um, what it is is they're getting around the Fourth Amendment or this, this human right that we've been granted by saying that it's not your data, it's somebody else's data, and that's all we're requesting. Super shady. And, they, and Facebook doesn't have to tell us that they've made this request. And in fact, in some ways, they are prevented from telling us legally. They are not legally allowed to tell us that this request has been made. And of course, this doesn't just stick with Facebook. It's every service you use anywhere. Google, America, Twitter, um, any, most email providers, all, 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 all email providers that are not like privately created by yourself, which we recommend. Yeah, very DIY highly. as many services as you can. Seriously, learn how it works. Like, um, so like my co-defendant Josh is really bored up in Ohio right now, and he made a Jabber server. We have our own Etherpad for our co-defendancy. We have- Mumble. Yeah, we have our own Mumble, and like, it's ours. And if it's, somebody comes in, we know they have come in. It's ours. And it's just running on an old laptop that I had left over and a cable yeah. connection my parents have. So. And he taught himself how to do it. <laughs> so if Josh can do it, anybody else can do it too. There's no excuse. Look at this guy. <laughs> so. And then it's your data and not Facebook's data. Um... Yeah, so. Yeah, basically goes on the same thing. <clears throat> so if the government um, is allowed to say that, or these corporations and the government are allowed to say that it's not our data, it's the services data, and if they're allowed to prosecute us and arrest us and charge us like they have been, um, then what rights do we have online? We come online to be free, to do what we want, to be what we want and say what we want. Why, what jurisdiction do they have there? They shouldn't have any. And, and so essentially our argument is, is that so much of your life is online that if your human rights and your civil rights do not extend to online, then they do not exist. They're gone. They're, so. And, and we feel that this particular time in history is the time that this is going to be decided. If it's not decided now, then it puts us in a really hazardous position for the, for the future. Because this is when it's being decided and we need to really push for them now or we won't have them ever. They'll be gone. Uh, so we came up with some ethical questions. Yeah, so uh, do you feel like the banks should be able to tell you where you can spend your money? And obviously, that's a really big problem because um, especially in the United States, there's only like maybe five or six major banks now, especially since the collapse and they consolidated. Um, so if all the banks decide that you can only buy your tires from this one place, then that is where you have to buy your tires. And so it's a serious problem uh, that could potentially control people's spending rights, which we feel, especially, you have a more socialist society here, but in the United States, capitalism runs everything. And if you don't have your capitalist spending rights, then what rights do you have? None. Um, none. Zero. None. You are your wallet. So that's why the poor and the homeless see no, uh, no rights whatsoever. They're treated like trash. Yeah. And it's disgraceful. It's, it's pretty. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Things you can donate to or through PayPal other than WikiLeaks. 
Yeah, so we're also, if you have any others that you know are on this list that we forgot or left off that are really funny, we would love to hear those. Yes. We're, we're going to put a list on the website, which we built ourselves also. Um, but most of these organizations are known to be very violent, dangerous, or have known uh, very extremist views. Or they're actually um, registered as a hate group. Or yeah, like or the something. KKK is registered as a terrorist group, and yet you can still donate just yeah. fine to PayPal, so. or through PayPal. Yeah, uh, the Westboro Baptist Church, I don't know if you guys would be familiar with them in the United States, or in Germany, but they are the guys that go to like the military funerals and have the signs that say God hates fags. Everyone's seen these pictures. That's those guys. You can still donate to them, but you, can't, but you couldn't at that time donate to Well Holland. Uh, there's the Truth About Homosexuality guys, who are the ones who do like the pray the gay away camps, where you pray and you pray and maybe God will make you straight. They're a, they're a registered hate group and you can donate to them so that you can help people pray their gay away. Um, doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that's about it. Oh, yeah. So uh, money is speech. So that's basically the same thing we went over before. Mm, yeah, well, but it's got it. anyway. Go ahead. So uh, we had the Supreme Court decision that corporations are people, and they can donate as much money as they want um, to political candidates, which is not very good. And so. But they've decided that corporations can donate as much money to anybody that they want, any time that they want. They don't even have to tell us how they did it or how much. Um, they can, yeah, anyway. Um, but by blockading WikiLeaks, they've taken that same right away from you. So it's essentially the government, under their own rules, has colluded with the banks to take away the same right that at the very same time they had just given to corporations. So um, that's super, should be super illegal, but we're talking about the government. Um, and you can do this one. Yeah, so this was a major question posed by people throughout uh, the past four years, is how can you defend the freedom of speech while oppressing somebody else's freedom of speech? Um, and that's a very hard question because, yeah, that guy, even though you hate him, deserves to say whatever he feels like saying. Um, but at the same time, if that man is spouting uh, derogatory hate and inciting riots and starting um, general problems, uh, where is the line? And um, this is our line. You're, of course, free to choose your own line as you like. That's how yeah, ethics work. Yeah, of course, work. of course. This is just our um, opinion and things. But um, we feel that uh, in our context, there's a major difference between uh, what a individual or an individual being attacked or and a corporation being attacked. So, oh, yeah. And so when cases like these or when uh, issues like this come up, we look at the size and the general nature of why this person or, I mean, this entity was targeted. What did they do? What happened? What made people so angry at them? There's got to be a reason. Like, I can't imagine the board members of PayPal sitting in their boardroom going, we did nothing wrong. They must what have just loved do? us. They loved us a whole lot. They wanted to send us all our packets. So They were love packets full it, of love. But, like, didn't, didn't one guy question, like, maybe they're pissed off at us? Maybe we doing something wrong? Like, I, I don't know if they have the, the yeah. moral capability Probably. to Probably. think that way, but that's, that's exactly how I would think. If I ran a company, I would wonder why everybody hated me. What decision did I make to, to ruin our customer relationship? Like, what happened? And then work to fix it. But PayPal obviously decided not to do that.
We also feel there is a very, very big difference between a human with human rights and the rights of a piece of paper that is designed to make money. We've so if I make a blog and I put this blog up and it's got an opinion, that is my opinion formed by me as an individual, as a human with rights. But if PayPal has a blog, which they did until we DDoSed it into the ground. Um, that is an opinion formed on behalf of making money, on behalf of that piece of paper designed to make money. And it is not a human and it does not have rights. And so that is where our ethical line is as far as what is impeding freedom of speech. We do not feel we impeded PayPal's freedom of speech because we do not feel that PayPal is a person. And then this is sort of um, an open question because uh, I've given one talk before and I get this question all the time and maybe you have too, but people ask, um, well, LulzSec for the whole of their entity claimed that they were not the same as anonymous, that they were not anonymous, that they were a separate thing, but there was still the question of they were doing some things on a non-related servers and they were interacting with nons a lot. And so the question comes up all the time is, did LulzSec violate ethics when they stole people's credit cards and used them to donate to foundations? And were they um, violating ethics when they posted, when they dumped people's addresses and things? And then how responsible is Anonymous as a movement for creating the environment that allowed LulzSec to exist. And so we've left this open because there's some debate between us and we're not really sure how to answer it. And so if you guys have input on that, we'd certainly love to hear it because um, debates are fun. Yes. So we'll leave that open for the Q&A, which we will have in a moment. So here's a nice little thing they told us to put in. We were like, eh, but they're like, yeah, you need money. <laughs> and so <laughs> we're not, okay, it's money. Um, so if you would like to donate, there's a couple different options. There's the GoFundMe, which is not obvious. We don't have a PayPal for a couple reasons. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you can donate through the GoFundMe. It goes directly to the co-defendants and then gets divided equally amongst the co-defendants until the restitution is paid. And once the restitution is paid, then the GoFundMe will be closed and we will not be accepting any more money. We don't want money, we just would like to not be under the thumb of PayPal anymore. You can also donate through the Wow Holland, which is tax deductible in Europe, unfortunately not in America because nonprofits are only for people that are actually making profits. And if you would like to donate to uh, more Anons, like not us because we have our own thing, but for the broader Anon community who has been indicted, uh, served search warrants, has to pay for hotels, for court, things like that, we had a problem with that. Yeah. Um, you can donate to Free Anons, which is a, they're an organization that helps pay for like food and transportation and court. Um, fees for nons who are also being prosecuted other than just ourselves. So yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you for listening to our talk. co-defendants and if there are any other like currently indicted or prosecuted anons in the, or computer activists in the auditorium if you'd like to come up and join us for the Q&A because this is not me and Josh's movement this is everybody's movement and we all deserve a chance to answer anybody's questions if you would like so here's our co-defendants Oh, uh, this is the Q&A, and we'd like to give an opportunity to any, like, currently prosecuted um, 
activists, computer activists in the audience that would also like to join the Q&A, because it's not just our movement, it's everybody's movement. So, this yeah. is Keith. Hello. And this is Vincent Kershaw, Trevette. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Help if it was on. Hey. Yeah. So, shall we begin? Um, well, number one, please. Hello, and thank you for all you've done so far, and I hope uh, it turns out for the best. My question is with regards to the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act uh, statutes that say that protected computers that have been accessed across the internet, uh, that's a crime. Isn't it criminal negligence on the parts of the parties that need to administer this, these computers to have them available for easy access to the internet? Has someone tried to defend it in a way in such a way that it's criminal negligence on their part to not be administering their machines appropriately for the, them to be considered protected? It no, would, it, it just has to be you've accessed it without consent. Whether they left it, if they left it completely open and you went into it, it is still a violation of the law. It's not, it's not like, in, like in Australia, if you didn't take adequate precautions, then in Australia, then it's not a crime for someone to walk into your computer. So, but the United States is not like that. It's just access without consent, right. which is really, really dangerous. Because right. what if you do it by accident? Right. Um, sorry to interrupt. Oh. Um, I see people coming in, going out. If you want to leave now this room, please, over the sides, not through the middle gates here, because people are coming in, doors are closed now in, in the middle, and just leave to these sites for safety reasons. So please co continue. Okay, um, someone else, number four, please. Um, I take it that you have been prosecuted for being part of the anonymous movement, and I find it really hard to sympathize with it because of the, this huge sexist backlash against women and female activists on the internet. So, would you um, comment on that? So, Anonymous has caused a back, uh, Anonymous has done anti-feminism things? I think well, people in the name of Anonymous. People in the name of, so, this is the other thing that we tried to point out at the beginning is that anonymous makes up of whoever, whenever, however. I was a part of it at the time in 2010. I don't say I'm anonymous now. So what they do, um, I don't think is right, but I can't, they're anonymous. I, 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 I'm sorry, and I don't believe that they should be doing that, but I can't stop them. And there's no leaders either, sorry. so. <laughs> well, um, I, from a, I understand your point, and I understand how that's kind of maybe not enough as a woman. Um, but from a woman's perspective who I've, I've been there, and on the IRC sometimes uh, everyone is default male, which as men, that's totally fine for you because you are male, but if you make what some people consider to be a mistake and let people know that, hey, you have female pronouns or, hey, maybe you have a vagina. It's that instant, like, tits will get the fuck out. And you're like, no, show me your tits or you get the fuck out. Prove you're a man. Um, and, yeah. And so I can say that from personal experience, like, that's just like an internet uh, culture thing that has leaked into Anonymous and as, okay, so, if I ever had a problem on Anonops, which is one of the largest um, anonymous IRCs that's been going on since 2010, you were there. Um, if someone says this to me and I get mad, there are people, and particularly one of them's here in the audience, who like instant ban, like you are, fuck you, go away. Because how dare you make another Anon feel uncomfortable like they can't do activism here. And if it gets to that point, if someone makes it clear that they have hit that point, then um, like that person has to be dealt with, period. So I understand like the, under the feelings of the culture and saying like, hey, that guy's a faggot, but um, that's another panel completely. But <laughs> um, it is not quite what it's been made out to be. And I really recommend that if there's a problem, 
then say something to your sysadmins, and if there's a problem with your sysadmins, get new sysadmins. Because sysadmins are replaceable just like anybody else. Right. Is there a question from the web? Oh, thanks for asking. Um, there's no actual question from the web, but there was a lot of discussion around um, why you have chosen um, DDoS PayPal and not an other approach. Maybe you can collaborate on this. You guys want to talk about Loic and the Hive and all that good stuff? Um, Is your mic on? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so the question was basically why did we choose to DDoS rather than hack? Um, really, I guess I see it as a sit-in rather than, you know... Breaking and entering. Yeah, we, there's no need to break and enter when you can just, you know, Bar have, an online, have an online sit-in. So, you know, to me, I saw it as, you know, a, a legitimate way to protest PayPal and let our opinions be known. Um, and it's as simple as that, really. And, Ger and in Germany, like with the Lufthansa case, yeah. it is legitimate. Yeah, it's protected speech here, political speech. So, I mean, what we went the past four, what we went through in the past four years. If you're a German citizen, you like for nothing up of trash it. for a weekend, and that's it. It's not Question answered. I think so. Um, number five, please. Uh, yes. Yes. Hello. Um, how much um, trouble would it? get you if someone who went to the same legal hoops during that same time uh, came up to you to say hi? Oh, it's all good now where we've been sentenced, so we can talk to people now, like people can come to talk to us. It was for a long time if somebody messaged me on Facebook and said, hey, I'm from Anonymous and I want to hang out and I really support you, I would have to like delete their message and never talk to them again because our conditions were worded very specifically that if you, uh, if we knew someone to be anonymous, then we couldn't talk to them. But if there was that layer of doubt where like we don't know, they haven't told us directly, then it's okay. So it goes from like the second they tell us, then we have to s stop speaking to them. Um, so now we've been sentenced and it's totally cool, which is how we get to be here right now. It's because the government finally decided to let us go. Um, but so now if you wanted to hang out, it's totally cool. We're pretty available. You can call us, actually. Do you have your phone on silent right now? Oh, it's down there. Oh, it's down there. Okay. Well, our GSM number is Swede, S-W-E-D, uh, or F-U-N-O, you know, you know F-U-N-O. I registered that one. Uh, okay, so I think that's... Question answered? Great. Great. Uh, number four, please. Right, so if you would be willing to talk about this, what are the amounts of money that you now owe and uh, you have received? And second question, would it be useful for you right now and here to receive cash or not? We were going to have a bucket. <laughs> McFly forgot to get us a bucket. We were supposed to have a bucket and McFly <laughs> misplaced it somewhere. My bucket. <laughs> um, okay, so... So far, we have raised about what? What was it on the GoFundMe 18, like? Um, I'd have to look. Um, I know. <laughs> yeah, we raised. I want to say seventeen. It was, I think it was GoFundMe. It was close to eighteen thousand yeah. on the GoFundMe, and then something like four thousand on the Wow Holland, which our group, like the PayPal co-defendancy. Um, Almost every single decision is decided by our group. So even though I sometimes end up being the one that everyone wants to talk to because I'm like the token girl, if someone comes to me with a question, I like screenshot the question and I send it to these guys and I'm like, hey guys, how do you want me to answer this question? Like everything that's done on behalf of PayPal is done on PayPal 14 is done on behalf of PayPal 14 and decided by PayPal 14. So we decided then that the 4,000 that was raised for Well Holland should go for this trip to like let people know what's going on and how things are in the United States and how we would really like them to be, which would be freedom. That would be nice. Yeah. Um, so we've raised about 21,000, but 4,000 went towards being here today. So, so we still technically need 50. 
It's okay, so it's <laughs> fifty six hundred each defendant then, wow. times thirteen. So it's about Well it's eighty six thousand altogether minus twenty one thousand. Yeah. So it's complicated. It's a lot of money. It's I'm like fifty thousand is left. And yeah, and GoFundMe and GoFundMe right now is listed at eighty six thousand, but that's because they take like the eight percent. Yeah, the eight point five percent fee. Yeah, it's a fee. So, so if you look at the GoFundMe, it includes the fee for GoFundMe. Because we thought that would be a good idea at the beginning. So it's closer to 7,200, but we have about 50,000 left to go, which will not fit in a bucket. Right. And yes, we take cash. <laughs> yeah. So, so if you give us cash, come, come up to the stage and give them all your money. <laughs> Anyone else is invited this to guy, them give all this guy your money. money. <laughs> He's trustworthy. Um, is there something else from the web? Apparently not. Uh, sorry, I was, was reading. Um, there's one question um, for the panel. Um, could you perhaps um, comment on how you or the other um, people that were rated um, were founded or were found or were identified? Have you any idea? How they identified us? Is that what Yes. Uh, uh, how okay. have you been identified? You can tell um, the stories about the servers in Texas. Um, yeah, actually, uh, they found, I'm pretty sure, um, Mercedes and like the people who were like channel operators and stuff like that who actually didn't who weren't involved in the protest um, they sir they seized a server from host dime and hurricane electric and one of them apparently had logs on it um, somebody didn't know how to use dev null apparently um, so do it yourself yeah um, so yeah, they got caught that way. Um, some of us were caught by sending packets. Um, I was one of the unlucky yeah. 1,000 people that were caught in PayPal's logs and they decided to indict yeah. five of us. Well, I think we all sent packets. It's just some of us used a VPN. That too. <laughs> Use a VPN. I think, personally for me, I think I was set up by an individual yeah. within the movement, yeah. and uh, that guy is another. Story I don't for have. Day. I don't have all of the documentation I need to prove it, so I'm not going to yeah, put out any allegations at this time. But I'm we working on that. <laughs> we just did. There's a website registered <laughs> already. So we have about two minutes left, I think, and so I think we have time for one more question. Yeah, last question number one, please. Hurry up. You want? Oh no! Sorry. Anybody um, else? Someone else? No. Something else from from the net? The Weber nets. Yeah. Um, there's one question coming in. Um, so, did you do anything more than sending more packets to to PayPal? And is this really illegal? So, what was the current charge? Uh, no. We we can't really? answer that question. Yeah. <laughs> Not legally if we don't want to be arrested when we go home. Again. Again. <laughs> I see your point. <laughs> great, 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 great. I think this was an awesome talk. Thank you very much. Give a very thank warm you. thank you and applause. Yeah.